Hey everyone, welcome to part 98 of my Pokemon game series in Trinity. So in this video, we'll customize the UI for selecting the cutscene actor in the inspector. So this is how our customized UI will look and we'll be achieving it by using custom property draws. Alright, so let's look at how to implement this. By the way, I started a new series on Patreon that covers how to make a 3D Pokemon game like Pokemon Legends Arceus in Unity. So if you're interested in making a 3D Pokemon game or a 3D RPG game in general, then you can check out this course on Patreon. So by becoming a Patreon, you can support this channel and get access to the 3D Pokemon series and get some other cool rewards like the complete project files of the series, some exclusive tutorials and access to the Discord community. So before we start, I want to say a huge thanks to all the Patreons who are currently supporting the channel. You guys make the series possible and I'm grateful to each and every one of you. So let's start the video. So right now, this is how our cutscene actor looks in the inspector. So I want to improve how it looks because we're going to have more actions where we have to select the cutscene actor. So there are two things I want to improve. First, I don't want to show this in three lines like this. That will take up a lot of space in the action. And when we have lots of actions, it can get hard to manage. Okay. So instead of showing it like this, I want to show everything in a single line. So that's the first thing. And then if this player is turned on, then there is no point in showing the character field. Right. If it's turned on, then we'll be using the player character. And there's no point in assigning the character in the character field. So we can hide the character field if this player is turned on. Okay. So we have to customize how this field is displayed in the inspector. So we can achieve that by using a custom editor. But the problem is when we use a custom editor, we'll have to rewrite the entire objects in the inspector. Okay, that'll be a lot of work. A smarter way of doing it is by using a custom property drawer. All right. So in Unity, a custom property drawer allows us to customize the UI of a single object without rewriting the entire editor. Okay. So let's create a custom property drawer for our cutscene actor. So in scripts, inside cutscene, inside the editor folder, I'll create a new script called cutscene actor drawer. Okay. Let me open it up in Visual Studio. It did not open up for some reason. So let me search for it using control comma shortcut. Okay. So this is the class. So let me get rid of the default code. And this script is not going to be a mono behavior. Instead, it is going to inherit from a class called property drawer. All right. And to be able to use this class, we have to import the unity editor namespace. So let me do that. Okay. So next, we have to make this class a custom property drawer of our cutscene actor class right so for that we have to use the custom property draw attribute and for the type we have to pass the type of cutscene actor okay so this will link the cutscene actor drawer and the cutscene actor class and it will make cutscene actor drawer the property drawer of the cutscene actor class all right so it is pretty similar to how we write custom editors, right? Only the class and the attribute is different. Okay. So next, to customize the UI from a property drawer, we have to override the on GUI function. All right. So this function has three parameters. First, the position, which is the rectangle on the screen where the property will be displayed. The second one is a serialized property. So serialized property is 
a serialized version of our cutscene actor class okay so this will be useful when we want to access or modify the values of our cutscene actor class all right and next we have a label so this is just a name that we gave while defining this property so in this case it will be actor okay so if you look at the inspector right now as you can see that it says there is no gui implemented for our cutscene actor so we have to implement the ui from this function so let me just get rid of this line and let's start building the ui so first we want to create a label before showing the fields of the cutscene actor so we have to create a label like this right so we have a function for that in edit the gui and the function is called prefix label okay and for creating the label we have to pass the total position of our property so let me pass the position and then we have to pass the gui content so we can just pass the label that we get from the function okay so this will create a label and it will return a position right you can see it's returning a rect so what it will do is the label will occupy some portion of the total position and it will return the rest of the position so that we can use it to create other elements okay so that is a pretty useful functionality provided by the prefix label so let me store it back to our position and we'll be able to use this for creating other elements okay so let's look at how our label looks in the inspector so yeah here you can see the actor label so next we want to create a toggle for the displayer boolean and we can create an object field for assigning the character right so the one thing i forgot to mention is that in custom property drawers we always have to specify the position of a ui element when we create it okay in our custom editors we had a layout class for both gui and editor gui so we also had a class called editor gui layout in which we don't have to pass a position and unity will automatically position it for us right so that is not possible in custom property drawer we have to manually pass the position for each ui element okay so now let's look at how to create a toggle for the displayer boolean so in gui we have a class called toggle for creating the toggle okay and for the position i'll just pass the entire position for now we'll change it later and get a different position for both the fields but for now i'll just pass the entire position so next we have to pass the value so how can we get the value here all you have is the serialized property of the cutscene actor object we don't have the cutscene actor object itself right so in our usual custom editor scripts we can get access to the object itself right but in custom property drawers we only get the serialized property of our object and the serialized property is really useful even in our normal custom editor scripts we do use serialized property if we want to modify the value of some field okay but until now we have been creating simple editor scripts so we haven't used serialized properties yet but we'll look at how to use this from here okay so this serialized property that we get in the function is the serialized version of this entire object okay but to create the toggle for the display boolean we need to get the serialized property of this boolean itself so from the serialized property of our entire object we can get the serialized property of the boolean field by using find property relative function okay so this will help us find properties inside our object so here we want to find the displayer property so we can just pass the name of that property and it will return the serialized property for displayer okay 
so let me store this in a variable called is player property i'll just write prop short all right and now we can use it to create the toggle so for the value parameter of the toggle i'll pass is player property dot boolean value so remember is player property is not the boolean value itself it's a serialized property right so from that we have to pass the boolean value okay so next we can pass gui content so this will be shown as a label next to the toggle so i'll just pass is player for that all right and since toggle is a ui control that can modify the value of the player boolean we have to return it back to our boolean value okay so whenever a control can change the value of something in imgui we have to return it back to the field that we are going to change okay so next once we change the value of a serialized property like this we also have to apply that change so to apply the change in a serialized property first we have to get the serialized object and then we have to call the apply modified properties function okay so whenever you make a change you have to call this function to apply that change so let's look at how our toggle is looking in the ui okay so here you can see that we have a toggle for the display boolean so next we need to create an object field for assigning the character right so to create that we can use editor gui dot property field and property field will take our serialized property and it will automatically determine what type of control to show so in our case it's an object field so in the property field function first we have to pass the position so for now let me pass the entire position later i'll show you how to use different positions for the toggle and the object field so next we have to pass the serialized property so to get the serialized property of our character object again i'll use the find property relative function and here i'll just pass the name of the property which is character okay and finally for the gui content i'll pass gui content not none because i don't like having any labels in the object fields since the object fields already have a placeholder that is enough for the user to understand what that object field is all right so let's look at how this looks in the ui all right it looks a bit weird the toggle and the object fields are overlapping right so if i click on the object field you can see that the value of the toggle is changing right so the toggle and the object field are displayed on top of each other so the reason for that is because we are passing the entire position of our property for both the fields right so we have to pass a different position for the toggle and the object field so i'll create two separate variables for both so first let me create a variable called toggle position so position is actually a rect right so i'll create a new rect and for the toggle the x position will be the same the y position will be the same and width is what we want to change so we don't want the toggle to take up the entire width we want some of the width to be taken by the toggle and some of it to be taken by the object field right so here for the width i'll just pass 100 and we can give the rest of the width to the object field and then for the height i'll just pass the position dot height itself because everything is going to be displayed in a single row all right so next let me create a position for the object field all right so the x position of the object field will start from the width of the toggle right so the exposition will be position dot x plus the width of the toggle which is 100 and next the y position will be the same and next for the width 
we want to use the rest of the width after 100 right so for the width i'll pass position dot width minus 100 okay so then next for the height i'll pass position dot height itself so we have defined the position for both fields so for the toggle i'll pass the toggle position and for the property field i'll pass the field position okay so now let's go to unity and check how it looks all right so now you can see that it looks much better right so around half of the width is taken by the is player toggle and the rest is taken by the object field for the character okay so i think we can give a little more width to the object field because it's the bigger control so let me just change the width of the toggle position to something like 70. all right and let's see how it looks so yeah that's much better the object field is a bit more bigger now okay so this looks much more cleaner right we have everything in a single row and the cutscene actor is not taking a lot of space in the inspector okay so the next thing i want to do is if is player boolean is turned on then i don't want to show the character field right there is no point in showing that if this player boolean is turned on so it's pretty easy to achieve that all you have to do is check the value of is player prop before showing the object field and we should really show it if the value is false right so remember to get the value we have to use the boolean value since this is a serialized property all right so now the character field should only be shown if this player toggle value is false so let's test that all right so it's showing when it's false but if i turn it on you can see that the character field disappears okay so that looks much better and now the designer won't be confused on like what actor will be used okay so we're pretty much done with our custom property drawer but the one last thing i want to add is i want to add the begin and end property functions so at the start i'll call edit the gui dot begin property and here we have to pass the position the label and the property i'll explain why we are doing this okay and at the end we have to call editor gui dot end property function so the reason why we're doing this is because unity will know that our property is inside these two functions and it'll help unity to provide us with some default functionalities that unity have so for example when you change a property of a prefab outside that prefab you'll be able to see those changes in the overrides right so by adding these two functions unity will be able to provide us with those functionalities for our property okay so i just use these two functions whenever i am writing custom properties all right so our inspector looks much better now and let's actually go ahead and test our cutscenes to make sure that nothing has broken since we made the change okay so let me go to the gameplay scene and let me test okay so the cutscene is working perfectly so nothing has broken since we made the change so i'll stop the video here and in the next video we'll implement more cutscene actions so if you found this video useful please leave a like on the video and consider subscribing to my channel that will really help me out and you can also support the making of the series by becoming a patreon and get some cool rewards in return so thanks a lot for watching and i'll see you in the next video